What's good YouTube, it's White Mike, and today I'm gonna to be showing you how to correct for those skin tones in Premiere Pro. Let's get into it. All right, so to go ahead and correct those skin tones, let's jump into the Mac desktop here, open up the video editor, and then I'm gonna walk you through the process. So the first thing you wanna do is open up Premiere Pro, open up your project, and have the clip up that you wanna correct for skin tones. This is a ProRes file that I shot on the Ninja 5, and it shot an S-Log for the A7S II, and that's S-Log 2, not S-Log 3. And the first thing I wanna do is actually select the clip, go into my Lumetri panel here. So you can also be on the Color tab if you don't see that, and click on Basic Correction. And I'm actually gonna put an S-Log 2 LUT here that's gonna change this to the Rec 709 color space. So this is what it normally looks like out of a camera that's not shooting a flat profile. And if you have your white balance and your settings correct, your skin tone should look fairly good. So the way we're gonna tell what our skin tones look like is over here on the left side for the effects, you're gonna click this little arrow and change it to Lumetri Scopes. And then yours may be on waveform, so if you right click and you have waveform here, right click again, hit vector scope YUV, right click and turn the waveforms off, and that's how you can get to this vector scope. Now the vector scope is round and it has the colors from red, magenta, blue, cyan, green, yellow, just like a standard color wheel. And you have these little squares here that are broadcast saturation limits, I believe. You try not to exceed those, but I don't do broadcast, so I don't really look at these anyways. The only thing we're gonna be worried about is this line here for skin tones. So, so this is the line where you want your skin tones to fall. So the way we're gonna isolate our skin tones is actually click on the clip, go to effects, and I'm gonna go to where it says opacity, hit the pen tool, and start clicking around my face. Now, if you don't have a face in your image, you can click around an arm, any piece of skin that is showing in your clip. And it doesn't have to be perfect, just don't include any other colors because it will just throw off your, your reading here. So you can see our skin tones are pretty good. They're actually sitting right on the line where we want them to be. So now let's go and actually disable this mask uh, by clicking the opacity. All right, so we've taken that mask off. Now what normally happens is you will apply a grade and it will throw your skin tones off even more. So let's turn on my scopes and I'm gonna go here to creative and I'm gonna add a look. So I'm gonna add the Daniel Schiffer Vista Cruiser look. And this is gonna add a lot of pink and blues to my image and you can see it also made my skin tone really really pink let's turn this on and off and look at our scopes you see how the colors really shifted toward the blues cyans and then magentas so that's what this actual grade does so i actually want to only isolate on my skin here so how do we isolate the skin we're going to go to hsl secondary click this plus sign here click on our skin and then click this box that says color gray. And now you can see it's only showing up what our skin tones are. And you can actually change this to color black to make it a little easier. And we wanna move these dials and these little arrows until we have only selected our skin tones. So this is saturation and this here is luminance. So dark to lights, we can expand these arrows, expand them more. And these arrows, when you do it like this, it's more like a feather. So I mean, that is looking okay. So we're moving this, moving this, moving this, moving this. And I don't want to select any of this other stuff. So I just want to make sure that I'm only selecting my skin tones. So it can be a little tricky. You have to get it just right. Now this gives you a little more control over the final cut stuff, but the final cut stuff is a little more straightforward. But you can see kind of the area of our skin tones. So if I turn this on and off, you can see what we're selecting. And I'm okay with there being some colors on the side of the face, that's not a problem. I just don't wanna affect the whole background here. Kinda of minimize that. I'm gonna leave this like this. Go back to the effects and turn that opacity mask back on. So now I only have my skin tones in the image. Go back to the Metroscopes and you can see that it's pushed my skin tones all the way up to red and magenta. And the way we're gonna fix this is we're gonna to go to HSL secondary again. We have our mask enabled. You can actually turn this off too if you, if you wanna see this. And we're gonna go to this color wheel here and we're just gonna try to move this into the area we want. So instead of this red magenta area, we wanna move it towards the kind of yellowish orange area. Let's start clicking and dragging. And you can see how my skin tones just shifted. But you don't wanna go too far because then your skin tones will look crazy and you'll look like an Oompa Oompa. So I'm gonna double click to reset that. So it's just gonna be like a subtle, a very subtle move. I'm dragging towards the oranges, dragging. And then once I see that majority piece, so I'm looking at this big blob here. 
Once I see this cross that line, that's when I know. So I'm not so worried about this piece here. This is more of uh, you know, all these little red spots around my face. And also what I wanna do is on this creative, I wanna bring this intensity down to 50 because that's probably about where I would actually be. Be sure you do that first, you tone down your grade. You don't want it at 100% when you apply your LUTs. So you can see that my skin tones are now right on that line. So if I turn this on and off, you see how my skin tones went from here to there. So to me, they're a little bit oversaturated. I can pull this saturation down a little bit too, bring them down to about right there. So I think that looks really, really good. So I'm going to actually go back to my effects panel, turn off that mask. And now you can see that if I uncheck this secondary, look at my face, you can see that it goes from being pink to being more of an orange or more of a standard skin tone look. We can also zoom in here. pretty good again we can check this and see where it's pulling in so I kind of see some issues here and the way you'd fix that too is on your HSL secondary on refine you want to bring that denoise up you see how it's blurring those pixels and you also want to bring that blur up so it's blurring that line of where the selection is so it makes this stuff blend in a lot better so if i want to select this part here so maybe i want to get more of that cheek in there i can do it like that do a fit and there you have it so that's how you would correct the skin tones those look pink and dead and this just looks a lot better now and i did this without affecting the background so i still have my pinks in my background and my blues and things like that so that's how you would correct for the skin tones in premiere pro you can see the before and after here also if you like to use adjustment layers so i didn't use an adjustment layer in this example but if you like to use adjustment layers another way you can do this because if you try to do a mask on the adjustment layer you're actually just going to mask the adjustment layer not the clip what i also like to do sometimes is go here create a black video drag that on top and this is easy to enable and disable so instead of drawing that mask directly on your file or the adjustment layer you can actually click on the black video go to opacity i'll choose something like the square i'll line it up with my face and then i'll start just moving the points if you want to add more points you just click and drag and then hit invert and you have your mask. So you can still do this with adjustment layers. Just create a black video, expand that across your clip, and that'll give your isolation of your skin tones. And then you can turn your grades on and off for your adjustment layers. So mine are on my clip directly, but you can see I can still get those uh, those readings that I want. You can see the saturation jumps from that S-Log file. Once I add that Rec. 709 layer, it jumps up significantly. And then when I add the color grade, it's kind of staying in that same area. So that's another good test where I can compare before and after. So it looks pretty good. And then for the black video, you can just turn this off anytime you don't want to see the mask. But this is my method for correcting for skin tones in Premiere Pro. All right, so that's how you correct for the skin tones in Premiere Pro. If you have any comments, please leave them down below. Like this video, subscribe, hit the notification bell, all the good stuff. I'm up to 137 subscribers now. I did have like 124. I know it's not like a crazy amount or whatever, but I mean, just growing little by little. So I'll catch you on the next one. That's a wrap.